Good evening, my friends. This is Paul, and boy, am I on a video game reviewing spree with this being the fourth video game related video I've done in these last couple of hours alone. So today I'm going to be reviewing a very polarizing title for the GameCube known as Super Mario Sunshine. And you may be asking, Paul, why are you reviewing Super Mario Sunshine when you haven't even reviewed Super Mario Galaxy 1 or 2? Well, mainly because Super Mario Odyssey is coming out for the Switch, and Nintendo said that it would be returning to that style of more sandbox-style gameplay of Super Mario Sunshine. In addition, they also announced that Super Mario Sunshine would be one of the earliest virtual console offerings for the Switch. So I might as well get you guys prepared, right? Because I actually played it on the original system way before we ever heard of such a thing as a virtual console. So when Super Mario Sunshine first came out in 2002 for the GameCube, it was intended to be a direct follow-up to Super Mario 64, the game which set the standard for 3D platformers. But a lot of people didn't like Super Mario Sunshine because of the Flash Liquidizer Ultra Dowsing Device, which stands for FLUD, abbreviated, which is a water rocket pack that Mario gets within seconds of starting the game that allows Mario to use the power of water throughout his quest, which involves spraying like a hose, hovering in the air like a jetpack, soaring into the air like a rocket, or zooming across land and water like a jet ski. Now, the reason for why Mario has a water pack is easily explained by the game's opening cinematic, which has Mario, Peach, and her vast array of toad servants traveling to a tropical island to get a vacation after what Bowser put them through in the previous game. But, upon getting there, Mario is falsely accused of being the culprit of vandalizing the island. And therefore, since no eyewitness seems to realize that Mario actually has color and the previous one is sort of you know, just blue all over, they say, okay, Mario, well, you have to clean the whole island, and that's why you have the water. So, yes, a lot of the game does involve spraying and cleaning and trying to use water to your advantage, but if you think about it, not too many games that aren't, say, Endless Ocean force you to think about water that much. You always have to be constantly aware of where the lakes and the rivers and the ponds are in Super Mario Sunshine because you only have a limited quantity of water to work with. And despite the fact that this may not seem like a Mario platformer, you want to try getting through half of these levels without using the hover nozzle to improve Mario's jumps. I didn't hear anyone complaining about that when they had the Tanuki Leaf in Super Mario Bros. 3, so why are they complaining about that here? In addition, while Mario may not be able to punch, he can creatively attack enemies almost first-person shooter style with the squirt nozzle. And I didn't hear people complaining about that when Mario had the fire flower in the original Super Mario Brothers. So I guess all the unfound criticism really comes from a lack of intuition. Because a lot of the stuff Mario does in this game that makes it not feel like a Mario game... They're really just reinterpretations of things that already existed. You know, you know, you've got the squid that Mario has to face, which is obviously inspired by the blooper. You've got the goop monsters that you have to spray their mouths that are obviously inspired by piranha plants. And then the most glaring oversight of all that I don't get how people don't realize the magnificence of this is the stages where Shadow Mario briefly takes away Flood, and so Mario has to rely on simple platforming techniques alone. These stages have the acapella Mario theme playing in the background, and sometimes with like 8-bit Marios flashing around as the game's background wallpaper. And these sections are by far some of the best parts of the game. Not that the original game was bad by any means, but this is definitely that nostalgic throwback that diehard Mario fans definitely needed, as there's a lot of jumping and spatial reasoning involved. The exception being the final one, the last level, which just feels way too mathematical for a Mario game. Now, thankfully, spatial reasoning is very easy to do in this game because Super Mario Sunshine has by far the best user-controlled camera in the Mario series. I say user-controlled because, in my opinion, Super Mario 3D Land takes the cake for best overall camera. 
Super Mario Sunshine actually makes another masterful design decision that I'm surprised many other games haven't imitated, and that's you can still see Mario when he goes behind a solid object, because the game gives you a circle that shows his view, and if the technology isn't enough to show Mario in its entirety, it shows a silhouette of him, which prevents the game from getting stuck and allows you to still maintain full control of him even when the camera angle is not ideal. It also helps that the camera can literally zoom back so it becomes a top-down perspective, which can really lend a retro feel to the game. And I never, ever, ever, for even a moment, felt like the camera was outside of my control, which happened too many times in the original Super Mario 64. Now, the game is broken up into episodes, just like Super Mario 64, where you have a specific objective that you need to beat. Thankfully, this game is more story-oriented this time around, often with each episode playing off of each other, so that each course almost has its own storyline. Almost. Although the game does have voice acting, which is another rarity for a Mario game, even if the voice acting isn't spectacular. And there's actually a plot twist around the game's middle act, which... I, no one saw coming in a Mario game, let me remind you. However, the game does take a slight drop when you're forced to make very precise movements with water, which is sort of counterintuitive to the snappy, fast-paced platformer action that Mario games are used to, like, say, trying to steer a boat with your hose or trying to maneuver a watermelon across a narrow bridge is not typically the kind of stuff you'd expect to see in a Mario game, or any kind of game for that matter. It really does slow down the pacing of the game. But thankfully, the game has a much better approach to boss battles, often requiring very strategic maneuvering and well-timed usage of water. And the game also has a better hint system. Instead of relying on scattering random signposts all over the place, like in Super Mario 64, Flood actually has a voice of its own, and will sometimes pop in useful hints. And if you're wondering where to go in the game's hub world, Delfino Plaza, there's the Delfino Island news report that plays at the bottom of the screen that'll give you a clue as to where to go to find the next course. Now, unfortunately, there's only eight courses as opposed to, like, the, I don't know, 24 in the original Super Mario 64, but these courses are bigger and more varied because each episode slightly rearranges the design of the level, sometimes roping off entire areas that you couldn't get to in a previous one. So in a sense, it makes up for the lack of courses by having more variety in what you explore every time you do it. Kind of like the early Humongous Entertainment games for the PC, where every time you'd play it, it would be a different adventure. Now, the huge downfall to Super Mario Sunshine has to be Yoshi, which, when Yoshi appeared in Super Mario Galaxy 2, people were praising him as one of the best additions to that game. But in Super Mario Sunshine, it's one of the worst. Because not only is Yoshi poorly utilized, um, making episodes that require him to be so much of a pain because of precise aiming of his juice and... Just overall not really adding much to the overall gameplay, but there would be sections where you'd need to spit out a certain type of juice to get through an obstacle, and like I said, that just felt really weird. Now, Yoshi's a really high jumper. You'd think the game would take more advantage of, say, making more platforming levels that involve you using Yoshi's hover jump to its full ability, but... I guess they figured the regular water pack got the job done, or maybe they wanted to save Yoshi's use usefulness for Super Mario Galaxy 2. In addition, Super Mario Sunshine also feels like it has more of a completionist vibe than Super Mario 64 did, which is a huge disappointment, because Super Mario 64, believe it or not, actually let you avoid the in several of the game's courses altogether if you knew how to. In Super Mario Sunshine, it's mandatory that you complete seven out of the eight objectives in every world, which is extremely frustrating sometimes, especially in the more um, absurd missions, like the one where you have to defeat the Manta Ray, and for some odd reason, the game has horrendous frame rate at that point, which can actually break the episode you're on. But if you can look past some of the game's shortcoming moments and the overall brightness of the game's graphics that sometimes can make it, like, legit hard to see. 
so much so that you have in-game sunglasses, and the game's, like, overly kind of awful music, save for that Mario Acapella theme. That's awesome. Otherwise, this is a very underrated game in the Mario collection that is way more like a traditional Mario platformer than you might think. So instead of just listening to the critics and ranting and raving about it, maybe give it a rental. You'd be surprised by how much you like it, especially when you get to the um, floodless challenges. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. Hope you'll pick this game up when it comes on the Switch. And if not, you can probably easily play it on the Wii. And until then, keep the faith, stay epic, and God bless. Bye.